Hello, welcome to the sixth week of our course on marketing management part 1. And I am Jayanto Chatterjee from IIT Kanpur and my partner in this course is Dr. Uh, Shashi Shekhar Mishra. Uh, Dr. Mishra is not here at the moment. Uh, so, these two sessions uh, I will be interacting with you on my own. Now, the main theme of this week will be understanding customers, understanding consumers and their behavior in the context of our overall marketing plan and marketing strategy. This hopefully will give us insight into the motivations, behavior pattern, worries, satisfying points in the minds of the consumer, which will help us to shape our offerings uh, in a more attractive way. Uh, to begin with, I would like to present to you this uh, recap uh, visual. Here as you see, uh, we are mainly depicting that in marketing, we deal with goods and services and uh, it the set or the, the division is uh, between goods and services is not uh, very uh, concrete or discrete, it is kind of a continuum. So, on the left hand side you have most goods and on the right hand side you have uh, most services in under the blue uh, graph. So, on the extreme left hand side we have stuff like uh, clothing, apparels, chair, table, uh, motor vehicle, food. These are highly tangible and uh, they are subject to very uh, strong sets of specifications and design parameters, which are known both to marketers as well as to uh, consumers. So, here uh, fundamentally if one is feeling the need, we will discuss about this whole need issues etcetera and need characteristics uh, uh, shortly. But once uh, the consumer feels the need uh, for uh, this uh, bundle of uh, values, uh, which we have discussed earlier, uh, the bundle, the, the solution offered by a particular tangible set, uh, which will be like a motor vehicle or a chair or some food items. Uh, we mostly look for uh, 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 with, uh, with a quite a definite uh, idea uh, in our mind, we, we look for uh, objects of our satisfaction. So, uh, when we are in the market to buy a chair, we have fairly good idea about what kind of chair, uh, uh, what kind of facilities, what kind of functionalities, um, uh, what kind of um, uh, properties attributes uh, we want uh, from that chair. From there, if we move towards the right, then on the extreme right, we have um, uh, items like education uh, or a, a, a music concert or a, a, a movie, legal services, uh, complex medical treatment, surgery. Here, we have a general idea what we want, uh, we, we want relief from say pain. Now, the surgery may be a, a, a step forward towards that pain relief uh, measure, set of measures and therefore, uh, we do not have very clear cut concrete uh, idea in our mind, what are we going in for. So, here we often will not even know. Uh, even when the surgery is happening or even post surgery, whether we are 
uh, going to achieve our desired set of results which is uh, relief from pain. So, uh, this kind of uh, offerings where uh, the ultimate result comes in a delayed manner or over a span of time, even after consumption we do not know whether uh, the training that we got or the education that we received uh, would be valid over time in our life or a computer which we have just got repaired whether it will function uh, flawlessly or a, any other sort of repair or a legal engagement with a lawyer whether finally, we will uh, win the case or not. In all these cases as you see we have a high degree of uncertainty even after the purchase encounter, even after the consumption. Uh, therefore, these are considered to be very high in credence properties and therefore, marketing such intangible, highly intangible uh, offerings pose some special challenges. So, on the left hand side we say that these are offerings which are high in search attributes that means, these are informational strategies of marketing where we need to tell the customer what we are offering with respect to what they were expecting, we offer comparative opportunities and so on. On the very right hand side uh, there is uh, neither the service provider nor the service consumer have very clear cut understanding what they are getting engaged uh, for. Uh, there may be some uh, lack of uh, expectations perception match um, and all those uncertainties and uh, risk perceptions. These are high in credence and in between we have say a restaurant meal or we have uh, a uh, lawn or haircut, lawn mowing or haircut service or various other kinds of entertainment. In these cases, uh, we are fundamentally looking for an experience and good or bad, we are satisfied or unsatisfied depends on the quality of the experience. So, on the extreme left hand side, we have um, offerings marketing challenges for products and or combinations uh, which are high in search attribute. On the extreme right hand side we have high in credence attributes and in the middle we have uh, experience attributes. So, as you can see therefore, the marketing emphasis shifts from information providing to trust communication, uh, confidence communication, um, uh, creating uh, um, or, or lowering the risk perception on the extreme right hand side. We are going to discuss a certain uh, general approach, discussions will have emphasis on uh, service uh, encounters, because uh, these are in a way uh, the more complex part uh, or more complex episodes uh, where we can understand the deeper working uh, in the minds of the consumer as they engage uh, with the marketing activity. So, here as you see we are dividing the whole encounter or engagement between the marketer and the consumer in three stages, the pre purchase stage, the service encounter stage and the post encounter stage. This service encounter stage uh, could be actually a, a combination of product and service encounter stage like when you for a movie outing, then there is the movie itself uh, which is entertainment and uh, uh, quite intangible, but you know the whole ambiance, the popcorn, the snacks. Uh, the, the seat, the comfort, the air conditioning all these are tangible uh, part of that experience. So, it is a mix and, uh, and most 
products and services come to us in a mixed fashion somewhere the product elements are higher somewhere the service elements are higher. So, uh, this that is why we are beginning our session with uh, uh, these types of mixed offerings. So, what does it uh, what are there? Uh, so, this pre purchase stage this box basically consists of uh, uh, several stages. Uh, first stage is our decision to buy or use a service, this obviously uh, happens due to some kind of a need. The need can be triggered by uh, you know physical condition like hunger and you want to go for a meal to a restaurant or it could be something to do with uh, you know subconscious uh, you know we want to have fun, uh, we want to have um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, hanging out with friends and so the, this is something comes from the uh, uh, sort of unconscious is not a correct word though that is what we have used here, but it is like something which is not a very conscious decision, but a vague notion. And then the trigger can also come from some kind of external source like the marketing activity or some kind of word of mouth or some kind of uh, social uh, media uh, promotion effort or something like that. And then consumers go in search of a solution. So, from this need arousal which uh, creates that uh, attempt to find a solution, we immediately think of uh, an evoked set. Let me clarify this. For example, you may feel the need of going out and having a meal with uh, friends or relatives or family. Now, first thing that you it is a big universe of choices, so many different kinds of restaurants offering so many different kinds of cuisines. So, first you might be sort of coming to a subset of possibilities and say okay, we are going to have a Chinese meal or we are going to have um, uh, an Indian tandoori meal. Immediately from that total universe of possible number of restaurants you could visit, you would have uh, narrowed it down to a certain number of Chinese restaurants or tandoori restaurants. So, this uh, subset of choices uh, or, or the immediate preferred set of choices is called the evoked set. So, obviously, you can understand that uh, uh, all marketers uh, their primary attempt is to be part of the evoked set in the customer's mind when the need or arises or uh, when the uh, desire is felt. Search at this matching between customers uh, tangible desires with the offerings of the marketer. The search attributes already uh, create a framework for creating the expectation in the customer's mind. So, when a customer is coming for a um, you know uh, party with friends uh, setting in the mind for a tandoori meal, then already certain attributes of the product service combination that the customer would be looking for uh, has been set. So, these can often be evaluated even before the purchase. So, you can know that okay, uh, this is a restaurant where we cannot actually um, uh, this is a very sophisticated fine dining restaurant. So, this is not a place where we can uh, do halla gulla. So, this may not be a nice restaurant for uh, with a big group of friends where you know we may have uh, fun and frolic. So, therefore, you may actually go for an alternate uh, proposal which is like a local dhaba and uh, you know a kind of an open restaurant where uh, it is allowed to uh, you, you know you can make noises or, or, or it, it is encouraged that uh, you sort of have uh, fun. So, it is not a very formal place. So, this uh, experience attributes therefore, cannot totally be uh, evaluated by the consumer till you are engaged. 
So, only when you go there you have a general expectation which can be formed at the search stage, but the experience stage actually uh, is where uh, we sort of uh, see whether it is matching what we had thought of and what we are getting. And of course, as I discussed credence attributes are those like the medical operation or legal case, uh, legal engagement where we do not know the result um, even after uh, uh, the whole consumption process. Even in experiential engagements like the restaurant meal, there are parts where uh, credence uh, uh, properties are high like the hygiene quality of the kitchen uh, or uh, freshness of the cooking ingredients and so on. This uh, visual is about risk perception, this is very important. Whether you are buying a product or you are buying a service or you are buying a combination, this is a key responsibility for the, um, uh, for the, for the marketer to reduce this risk levels uh, in the minds of the customer with proper uh, thought out actions. The risk uh, perceptions come from different uh, areas like functional uh, where actually it is related to performance, uh, financial whether there will be post consumption some kind of loss like whether you will uh, fall sick and therefore, you will have to spend money or you may actually have some kind of big health risk and so on. It could be temporal or time related uh, anxiety or risk perception will they serve on time will I be able to catch my flight after the after dinner and so on. It could be physical uh, worry, uh, sometimes you know we are in a uh, like, like we are on a ride uh, in a amusement park, uh, we will have anxiety that is this ride, uh, it is exciting, but is it safe, uh, will I face any physical danger, will I fall out from my seat, that sort of thing. Uh, psychological, there can be other fears and uh, negative emotions, social, sensory, uh, these are all risks, uh, risk perceptions in the customer's mind, which the marketer in the offering, in the consumption uh, process must attempt uh, to reduce as far as possible. And uh, because of the risk perception, uh, the customer uh, seeks more information uh, from respected uh, personal trusted sources, uh, they compare service offerings, um, search for independent reviews, uh, we all do, do that right. We like we want to go to a movie, we ask friends or relatives who have already seen the movie, we read the review in the newspaper. This is a normal process uh, where uh, you know where uh, experience attributes or credence attributes are high, this is the kind of process we go through. So, which means that because the customer uh, or consumer uses this process, it is uh, the marketer has the opportunity uh, to create the suitable uh, confidence in uh, consumer's mind like offering guarantees or warranties or uh, building up reputation, uh, offering a strong brand image built over a long period of time through better performance uh, and so on. And of course, uh, there are also physical uh, representations of the service setting, uh, what we call physical evidence which means ambience, it could be the cleanliness, uh, the air conditioning uh, performance or the uh, color scheme, all these are um, they, they aim at reducing the risk perception uh, in the customer's mind. So, uh, uh, when we have a, uh, a dental facility, dentist's chamber, we pay particular attention to color schemes and comfort level of furniture etcetera, so that the customer feels at ease. Uh, because already the customer has lot of anxiety in his or her mind uh, when uh, going into a dent dentist's chamber. So, 
also uh, customers often evaluate the service uh, th this, this risk thing is assessed through the, the kind of impression created by the uh, employees of the service provider. We also in the marketing process use free trial or different kinds of credential display like if you go into a big doctors or lawyers clinic you will see all their certificates are on the wall or there are various kind of trophies on display. These are all meant to reduce the risk perception, to reduce the anxiety level in the customer's mind. So, as you see this uh, the field of behavior, the mental world of the customer is a, uh, is a world of engagement between the marketer and the consumer where uh, different levels of exchange of expectations and perceptions are uh, going on. And therefore, the marketer has to be conscious about not only the properties of uh, the product service combination uh, they are offering, uh, the quality of food they are offering, the taste of the food they are offering, but as well as all the other uh, aspects that we have been discussing, which creates the overall uh, evocation, the overall experience uh, very important. So, fundamentally as we will discuss a little bit more that there are therefore, cognitive or logical part, uh, factual part of our engagement uh, with a marketing experience, marketing episode, but there are also affective, emotional part and uh, on the whole therefore, ultimate uh, purchase intention, the conative part that will depend on how well we have managed the cognitive part as well as the emotional or affective part. So, just focusing on uh, product quality, uh, just focusing on the physical properties uh, will not give us marketing success until and unless we understand the mind of the consumer, develop the insights into how to manage um, the uh, the anxieties, uh, worries, uh, the risk perceptions in the customer's mind. Uh, we will discuss in little bit more about this how customers evaluate this service heavy uh, offerings quality uh, in a much more detail uh, at, a, at a later stage uh, when we discuss about uh, uh, services marketing per se uh, in, in greater depth, but at this moment as you have I you would have understood that there are therefore, three types of uh, attributes uh, which are playing uh, interactively in the customer's mind, the uh, logical factual search related attributes the emotional experiential uh, related attributes and anxiety risk and credence uh, related attributes and depending on the uh, depending on the uh, very first uh, graph you know where we showed the different types of products and services where your offering resides on, on this continuum, uh, you will have to create different uh, focus on search versus experience versus credence. So, that will uh, give us a way of creating the marketing package in a way that it uh, succeeds. Ultimately, the main idea here in conclusion I would like to present this particular view in front of you, where you can see that we have at any point of time uh, a desired service in our mind. This is often not totally clear, this is something, this is normally 
clear in the customer's mind that is the adequate service this is also you can call it the minimum expected service this is something that uh, in a way is uh, you know more the merrier uh, the customer would like to have uh, more in these cases more flavor better prices uh, better music quicker recovery from operations all this kind of thing uh, so this this can go up but this is at normally there will be certain expected level but again i emphasize this is a fuzzy level this is a much more concrete level between these two is the zone of tolerance so obviously if after the encounter again this encounter is not only service but mix of product and service like the movie so if the popcorn is bad it actually brings down your ultimate perception in the zone of tolerance if you have had an you know a bad stomach ache after having some snacks during your movies it will create it will basically depreciate the whole uh, encounter so this is the zone of tolerance so obviously we therefore all marketers in every aspect after the encounter would like to be above and not below that's uh, and there are a number of uh, factors that that uh, play on it personal needs belief what is possible these are what actually sets this limit also the kind of uh, word of mouth publicity or advertisement expectations these all build up they kind of move it upwards on the other hand the perceived service alteration situational factors predicted service so you can see a very interesting paradox here that as a marketer you have to see that this is does not go too down that means you will be categorized in the mind of the customer as a lower grade marketer lower grade of service product offering you have to also see that this does not go too high because then what you will actually deliver uh, will be actually there will be the gap will be more the idea is to bring this together but you don't want this to go down too much but if it goes up too much then it will push this up and uh, so fu fundamentally you have to uh, maintain a fine balance of what is possible and what is expected so kind of an uh, what we normally say in local uh, or, or uh, everyday language that under promise and over deliver how to achieve this in different kinds of settings is what we will be discussing throughout this week in different from different angles thank you